Well, good evening. How are you? How are you getting on? I'm all right. <laughs> it, it's, um, th this is amazing, isn't it? Well, to be with me. Yeah, literally, <laughs> to be with you. The, the idea that, that County Down could produce two lookers like us, Jimmy, within 10 years. I know. 10 years? Well, 12 years? <laughs> 15 okay. years? Yeah, um, yeah, no, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think it's good. We've done all right. Thanks for coming along. No worries. Very happy to be here. Uh, lots of stuff to chat to you about. I yeah. suppose we should start uh, with the tourists. Yep. Congratulations on the tourists. Are we watching that? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the first series was if anybody's living under a rock. This was mm -hmm. uh, an Irish man who went to Australia, woke up, couldn't remember anything, which is pretty much every Irish man that's ever <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> to Australia, would you say? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was certainly my experience of it before I shot the tourist. Yeah. yeah, not a spoiler alert, really. No. Uh, you're not in Australia this year. No, no, we're not. We're not. Uh, we were only meant to do one series, you know, and then that many people watch something and, you know, people change their minds <laughs> about what happens next. And, uh, yeah, I said, look, I am open to the idea of a second series, but I'm, I couldn't possibly bring, you know, my... You know, my kids went to school out in Adelaide. It's a big undertaking for the family to, to do that. And I just, I just wouldn't do that to them again so soon after. And so uh, I said, like, if we can do it closer to home and if it's something that can make sense where uh, we're not in Australia anymore, that would be great. And luckily, the, the writers, Jack and Harry Williams, had an idea of it being set in Ireland. And I was like, that, that works. That works? Yeah, that works. Uh, and um, we have a little clip of, of you doing your stuff. Okay. Here he is. Yeah, good. There's quite a spectacular beard. There uh, is, yeah, in, yeah, in yeah. Episode one. <laughs> I mean, it's kind, of, it's kind of very ZZ Top meets Jerry Adams. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, yeah. You, you hear me speak, it's probably more Jerry Adams <laughs> than ZZ Top. <laughs> lots of people loving the beard, and obviously you being a fashion icon, lots of people now sporting this look. Aye, okay. This is how the band uh, actually turned up. Oh, today, look at that. So, yeah. <laughs> That, now that's ZZ Top. Right? That's a hot one. I mean, that's a... What do you think? I mean, that's... Yours should be grey. Do you want to just... <laughs> there you go. Why is just... mine brown? Do I actually have to do this? I mean, well, you don't, you don't have to, but I mean, it's, it looks a lot more ridiculous if you do. There you go. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, this will be, um... That's what we'll look like when we're older, just like sitting in some pub unemployed. <laughs> I know. would say there's a lot more chance, Jimmy, if one of us sitting in that pub unemployed <laughs> than, than the other one. But if you're buying, I'm happy enough with I'd that. Buy, I'd buy your pint, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's so much stuff you've done, so many movies, so many big shows, but the, the tourist kind of covers... It, it covers a big period in your life, mm -hmm. you know, where there were lots of up and, ups and downs. Yep. Um, I remember whenever you went out to film The Tourist and, you know, you got to Australia and you got the news about your dad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which was Rough. the worst place to get news like that. Yeah, it was unimaginably, uh, unimaginably difficult. Yeah, we were in uh, a hotel quarantine. I was in a hotel room with uh, my wife, three kids and a nanny. And, uh, yeah, my dad died when we were in the middle of that. I still had... Three and a half days of quarantine left, so I wasn't allowed to leave. There's no compassionate grounds. I tried to get the production to, like, you know, I said, like, you can test me 100 times a day if I have COVID, but I, and I need to get out of this room. Like, I was in pretty uh, severe grief, obviously, and shock. But, no, they wouldn't allow it. Um, uh, so, yeah, it was an extremely difficult 
time in my life. I say, like, you know, the tourist, it's a mad thing to say because the tourist shot the tourist that year and Belfast came out that year and a lot of things changed for the better in that year, but I, I, it was the, I, I think it was the worst year of my life, actually, weirdly. Yeah, yeah. because, uh, you know, your dad, a lot of people from Belfast, you know, know who your dad was. Like, your dad was... Well, everybody from everybody. Belfast knows I mean, your dad, <laughs> your dad in Belfast is more famous than you. Way more famous than So, me, so yeah. tell us a wee bit about, about your old well, fella. My dad was an obstetrician, gynaecologist, uh, and for the majority of his career was at the Royal Maternity. And um, as a result of that, you know, he, he delivered over 6,000 babies in the north. Uh, that's pretty much everybody in that part of the world <laughs> was delivered by my dad. So um, you can only imagine at the, end, the amount of times people come up and I'm like, oh, here we go, this will be nice, you know, a fan of mine. <laughs> only to be told that, uh, you know, your dad delivered me and, and my mum said he was the most handsome man in Ireland. <laughs> and that you're not a patch on him. <laughs> so I get that sort of thing a lot, which is nice. Uh, and, and at one point he, uh, I didn't know this, that, that he could have been an actor. He, he had a place at, at RADA. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was offered a place at RADA. Uh, Dad went to, <laughs> remarkably, Dad, for a year when he was in uh, uh, junior school, prep school, he went to an all-girls school for a year as the only boy. And then for uh, senior school, he went to an all-boys school. And when they were in sick form, they did a production of Macbeth. And someone had to be Lady Macbeth, and that was Dad. <laughs> so Dad played Lady Macbeth to great acclaim, I, I'm told, or I was told a lot. And uh, got the, you know, won the drama prize and all this sort of stuff at school. And the uh, head of drama at Bangor Grammar, where he was at school, um, her friend was involved in admissions or something at RADA and, and yeah, offered Dad a, a, a place if he was interested in coming to RADA. But different time, you know, his parents were like, no, you know, that's risky, you go and become a doctor and, you know, he did all right. Well, mate, I, you know, he, he did all right and, and if he had taken that place up then, he wouldn't have met your mum. No, totally, yeah, they met. You know, uh, so yeah, that... Mum was a nurse at the Royal and they, they met at the, if you can believe it or not, they had a, a, an outdoor swimming pool at, um, <laughs> at Belfast uh, Victoria, Royal Victoria Hospital. And uh, it's not, there's a car park now. And, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, mum was getting out of uh, the, the, the swimming pool and dad saw her when they were junior doctors and was it? And the rest is history. Mm -hmm. um, so that time when, you know, you lost your dad and you lost your dad, he uh, died from COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember it was a long time before you could get back. Yeah, to for, Belfast, I think it was. Six, was it the it was the Belfast premiere really? Wasn't it? was the uh, first yeah, night? That I you got probably... back just before that, probably. And but Belfast, the premiere was in. Um, I'd managed to get back in um, August or September, maybe, and uh, the Belfast premiere was in November. It was a highly emotional night anyway, because we're we're bringing you were there, you were comparing it, but it was. Um, Jesus, like just you know what that you know, it's obviously a very personal movie for Kenneth Branagh, but for all of us, you know, particularly the cast who are from there, you know, it just meant so much to be telling a sh story like that and actually showing people caught up in a conflict as human beings and not people running around in balaclavas in the dark. You know, it was really important, I think. And uh, so it was emotional anyway. And then, you know, yeah, Ken actually... He dedicated, yeah, he dedicated, he dedicated the movie the, to dad the, that yeah, night. So that was, I was sat there, both my sisters, my, my auntie, my, my dad's sister, and they were just like weeping before the movie even began. So it was a, it was a special, very emotional night. Yeah. Um, tell us a story. Uh, your dad almost delivered uh, your firstborn, or he was he was he was he, <laughs> he was, was he was on standby. He did. So I got cast in Fifty Shades four weeks before they started shooting uh, because someone else had pulled out, and so it was all it was just mad. And Millie was. Um, Millie was 37, 38 weeks pregnant. Uh, and all our focus was on that, obviously, as it is, your, your first child, second child, you're still focused, third, you're <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, but the word, it was just like our life was going to change in this monumental way. And then suddenly I got cast in this thing that I knew was going to just create a lot of madness. Which was uh, going to be filmed in Vancouver. In Vancouver. And we weren't allowed to fly 
commercially at that stage because Millie was too pregnant. So we had to, they had to, Universal had to get us a private jet and, and then we, they had, we had to have it in a, in a contract that, that my dad would come that in case my wife went into labour uh, on the flight, there needed to be an obstetrician there. So dad obviously <laughs> raised his hand for that trip, <laughs> free trip in the private jet to Vancouver. And um, somewhere over mm. kind of New York, you know, about halfway across, I saw Dad just call over the the, um, the air stewardess and, and order a gin and tonic. <laughs> I was like, I know, Jesus, Dad, like that's I don't know, like that's it, this is a big thing. Would sort of like you to be, you know, ready. And he was like, Oh, son, like, you know, even if, if she starts her contractions, contractions now. She wouldn't be going into active labour till we're landed in Vancouver. <laughs> By that point, it's taken into someone else's hands anyway. So, I'd... <laughs> so that was it. Dad just had about four gin tonics. I mean, I remember that time for you because that that was a mad time in in your life because that was. was that was like the biggest movie in the world. Yeah, and. Weirdly, it wasn't scratching the itch for you. <laughs> am you I know, asking that in the wrong way? I think, I they, think I maybe am. They've made a choice to make that sexual. Yes, they have. <laughs> but and they that's have. on them, Patrick. <laughs> OK, good. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was, it, it, it was just this massive leap. It was just this mad thing from, you know, the fall had come out and I'd got a lot of big praise for that. And I, and I was, like, really excited about just staying in that kind of world, that kind of gritty television dramas, I guess. And there was a lot of that stuff offered to me post the fall and all the good stuff that came from it. And then suddenly I just got offered this, whatever it is. Like no, I mean, it, it, it's, it's mad, a, you know. It's a, it's a blockbuster movie. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's blockbuster a huge movie. commercial yes. movie. Yeah, totally. And um, has its own huge sort of uh, momentum behind it. Already, because of you know, you know, everyone in the world, you know, whatever language you spoke, knew of those books, and so you know, I knew I was up against that, so I knew that what the feelings were. But but that for um, me is something, like knowing you, I, I think th there's always been that element of you which is, you see yourself as an underdog who who has always sort of felt you got to prove something. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I think so. And the fact that I come from a modelling background and that. That's a big stigma that, as an actor, you're always trying to get away from. And look, it, I, I does not need, you know, I don't need much encouragement to 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 live with a sort of watch this attitude. I'm I'm very uh, fire lit under my arse sort of person. I am, um, I've always felt like that from being, uh, you know, obsessed with rugby and not being the biggest guy, but loving, you know, always having just like having to feel work harder. And, all that sort of stuff and being small for my year. And I've always felt like I've had to really, um, I've had a point to prove um, my whole life, yeah. How much of, you know, your teenage years and what happened, you, you know, with your mum and then your friends after that, how mm -hmm. much did that, in a way, bulletproof you for, for what was coming down the track work-wise? I think it's hard to quantify what that was, really, but... Because um, your mum died when you were what? I uh, just turned 16, yeah. and then four mates were killed uh, the next summer, 17. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, well, look, what, you know, what, what can you do when something like that happens? Jesus Christ. Um, I've always felt that I just had my like, worth of uh, grief and heartache and loss in a sort of 13 month period. and. I think that kind of made me resilient for other stuff maybe that's come my way. And that, um, I think a lot of people would say about me that I don't really get too hung up on small things not going right. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty like, that's fine because this happened to me. I dealt with this when I was at an age of too young to deal with that. So um, yeah, I think, it ha I think it's, it's certainly given me resilience and it's made, made me a lot of the positive things that I maybe have about myself that I think weirdly maybe come from that loss and it's a, it sort of a, sometimes feels like an ugly thing to admit anything positive coming out of a loss like that but I, I, you have to look i mean i i i feel you the same about it too it, i mean yeah. like you know i lost my dad when i was 16 and it's that weird thing where uh you know yes it's a terrible thing but um I, I, as as time goes on mm. you, you realize that 
there's something in there mm -hmm. which you can use and, and take with you. And, and I think you've yep. done that. Absolutely agree, yeah. Um, I look at you now and whenever we sort of chat, is this the most content that you've been, do you think? I, I do feel that, you know, it's funny, like, I think career-wise, it's as good as it's been. You know, I've, I've, you know, I had three or four things there in a row that came out, just got very well received, and uh, Belfast right in the, in the middle of all that, and um, I've got a big, you know, a load of choice over when I work and who I work with, and, you know, that's, that's like, seems unachievable when you're starting off in this industry you'll ever have a say over it you know you just think you have to do whatever job's given to you but so no i feel like i'm in a really good place i'm very excited about all the stuff i'm doing and uh, uh, yeah just a load of really exciting stuff and then yeah i mean home life has always been good like i'm lucky there you know my wife well like she's class and my our kids are unreal so uh yeah i, feel, I do i actually do feel really content but then, you know, it's only it, it's fucking industry, the way this works, you know. And then it's just like one person, the Irish Times or whatever, to say something negative, and then you just wax you back down again. So, um, like you, you know how much I love you. Yep. And, um, <laughs> right, you do. And, um, I love you too. And, uh, uh, I, I, I just want to say that um, thanks for coming coming and, and, and chatting to me tonight. And, and also, I just want to say that I, I really think you're only getting started. Uh, I, I really do. Thanks and so. uh, um, we're all so proud to have a, a ringside seat. Thank um, you very much. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you.